While working at a coffee shop a couple of weeks ago, a novel marketing listener spotted me and came over to say hi. She had a question as well. Her website just would not rank on Google, and she had no idea why Google was ignoring her. So I poked around on my computer, and her website was well-coded. It had all the right things in all the right places. So why was her website not ranking? Well, then I ran a speed test, and all became clear. Her website flunked the speed test. You see, a few years ago, Google started penalizing slow websites in search results. All else being equal, the slower your site, the worse you will rank. Ranking on Google can be a great way to get attention from new and old readers. And the more visitors you get to your website, the more email subscribers you get, which leads to more book sales if you're an indie author and better contracts if you're a traditional author. So having a fast website really matters if you're an author. So how do you make your website fast? How do you get it to load quickly when people type yourname.com into their browsers? Well, find out in this episode of Novel Marketing, the longest running book marketing podcast in the world. I'm Thomas Umstadt Jr., CEO of Author Media, and this is the show for writers who want to build their platform, sell more books, and make a difference with writing worth talking about. Now, before we talk about how to speed up your website, we need to first talk about how to find out how fast your website is in the first place. So Google recommends that your website load in less than two seconds. And really, faster is better. So Google tries to have their websites load in 0.5 seconds. So you may be like, oh, okay, I'll just pull out a stopwatch, load up my website, and see how fast it loads. But that's not actually a good way to test because you may have part of your website already downloaded onto your computer because you visited it before. So the real way to test it is with a speed test tool. And there's three that I recommend. GT Metrics, Pingdom, and then Google has their own, Google PageSpeed Insights. Google will give you two scores on theirs. They'll give you one score for desktop and one score for mobile. And expect the mobile score to be lower. It's a lot harder to score well on their mobile test. That's like the advanced placement test. (laughs) So uh, each of these tests will have a lot of technical details that you're not gonna understand. But don't worry, that's not what you're worried about. What you're looking for is two things. One, you're looking for your score. So you get an overall score out of 100 and several of the sites will also give you a letter grade. So you're trying to score either a B plus or an A and a lot will also tell you how long it actually took you to load your website. And again, you're looking for two seconds or less in terms of how long it takes to load your website. You'll notice that these three tools will give you slightly different scores. So if you're getting an A in two of them and a you know B minus in the third, it's probably okay. But again, I encourage you to test your website to see how well you're doing. The other thing to test is internally, WordPress has a new tool built in called Site Health, which will tell you a lot of quick things to fix. It won't tell you how fast your website is, but it will tell you some things that you can do right now to speed up your website. So with that said, let's talk about some speed bumps, some things that slow down your website, and then I'll tell you about some speed boosters, some things you can do to speed up your website. But the number one speed bump for author websites is Canva images. So for whatever reason, Canva is incredibly popular with authors, and I think it's because Canva is a great tool for making like Instagram images. You want to put a pithy quote on an Instagram image. Canva makes that really easy. The problem with Canva, though, is that it is designed for social media and it is not designed for the web. If you go to the blog post version of this episode, I have the logo for novel marketing made in Canva. And with the default settings, it is 279 kilobytes. Using the JPG version or the JPEG version, it's only 41 kilobytes. So Canva's recommended settings cause images to load 580% slower. So you can load 10 images almost in the time that it would take to load just one using Canva. So if you've been making images for your website using Canva, you may not have realized that you totally torpedoed your site speed and made your website very heavy, downloading these very large, unnecessarily large images. So here's the thing, you can actually make small images in Canva, you just can't use the default settings. And as we say in the tech world, the devil is in the defaults and almost everyone uses all the defaults all the time. And so if you're gonna use Canva, 
If you like Canva and you want to use it, you can keep using it. Just use the JPG option when creating your images. JPEGs are what you want for the web. PNGs are what you want for social. And the reason why PNGs are good for social is because that extra data in the PNG file is useful because the social media site, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, is actually going to turn the PNG into a JPEG. So it's actually still going to be a JPEG on Facebook, but it helps if it starts off as a PNG. A lot of technical details here that I won't get into. So anyway, the second speed bump for author websites is too many plugins. The coolest part of using a WordPress website is how many cool plugins you can use. And I love WordPress for this reason. I love plugins. I've made and developed plugins specifically for authors. But just because you can add plugins doesn't mean you can add as many as you want. There is such a thing as too many plugins. And each plugin that you add to your website is like adding a trailer to your truck. You add a trailer to your truck, maybe a box on top, it's okay. But if your truck is pulling, you know, a dozen trailers behind it, it's going to go slow. So uh, be careful with the plugins that you add to your website. Now, some plugins are worse than others. And the worst offending kind of plugin, the kind of plugin you probably want to take off of your website is social media plugins. And that Pinterest pin it button, and you got that plugin because somebody told you you'll get more traffic from Pinterest. What you may not realize is that plugin talks to Pinterest's server every time someone loads any page on your website. And then that person loading that page has to wait for Pinterest server to get back to them, adding this huge long delay in the loading of your website. And God forbid you have a pin it button and a tweet this button and a Facebook plugin button so that all this data is being shared with all these social networks, which by the way, are harvesting that data on your users, right? That's why it's free. They are taking your users private data and what they're visiting to get a better picture of them. And the worst part about these buttons is that actual users never click them. <laughs> like it, very rarely does anyone ever click one of these buttons. If somebody's on their computer, they can much easier copy and paste the link into the social network that they want to use. And on a phone, there's a share button built into the browser. So if somebody wants to share a page on Facebook, they're more likely going to do it with the built-in share feature in iPhone or Android rather than you have to have a button somewhere on the page. And so these really slow down your website and for no benefit. In fact, you'll probably find that if you take the social media buttons and the social media plugins off of your website, you're actually going to see your traffic go up because your site will be so much faster <laughs> that Google will send you more traffic and you're not going to lose any traffic from people sharing your stuff. And, and the other reason why these buttons don't work is that even if users do click share this on Facebook, Facebook's going to hide that post because Facebook doesn't want people leaving Facebook. Facebook wants people staying on Facebook where Facebook can make money off of those people. <laughs> so those social share buttons may have made sense in 2015. They don't make sense anymore and they really do slow down your website. Another kind of plugin may be slowing down your website is what I'll call a research plugin, right? Maybe you, when you were building your website, you weren't sure which contact form to use. So you installed two or three different contact form plugins to see which one you liked best. No, that's fine. I, I'm not against that. But when you decide which contact form you want to use, sometimes you forget to, to delete the ones you didn't go with. So they're still there, not being used, but still slowing down your website. So this is really easy. Just go in. Look at your inactive plugins and delete them. <laughs> and look at your active plugins and ask yourself, do I really need these plugins? Another kind of plugin that you can potentially remove is unneeded plugins. There are a lot of plugins that do just one thing that you don't really need a plugin to do. A classic example of this is a privacy policy plugin. You don't need a plugin to add a privacy policy to your website. You just need to create a page and name it privacy policy. <laughs> this is much faster and much easier. Another classic example is the classic editor plugin. This is a plugin that downgrades your website to a version of WordPress from 2018. It's buggy, it slows down your website, and it makes your life worse off. Just embrace the Gutenberg editor. It's amazing. You can copy and paste into it much better. It's much more powerful and it's much faster. So there's a lot of plugins that you may not need. And then the final kind of plugin is what I'll call a heavy plugin. So this is something like WooCommerce. This is a plugin that really requires you to spend more money on hosting if you want to use it because it's a big, heavy plugin 
that does a whole lot. And I'll occasionally run into authors who are using WooCommerce to build book pages because they feel like they need it. And this is like buying a semi truck because you need to charge your phone with a cigarette lighter. It is overkill. If you are not starting an e-commerce business and filing the paperwork to get a sales tax account and really invest a lot of money into starting an online e-commerce business, don't use WooCommerce. It is way overkill. You don't need an 18-wheeler. <laughs> You're just trying to pick up a couch uh, from somebody's house. Uh, e-commerce plugins are way heavy, and I don't recommend that authors use them. It's why we created my book table. actually, was to be a lighter, faster alternative to heavy plugins like WooCommerce. All right, so that was speed bump number two, too many plugins. Now let's talk about speed bump number three, slow hosting. A web host is the computer on the internet where your website lives, and you get what you pay for. But sometimes you get less than you pay for. <laughs> so the worst hosts often are domain companies. So companies like GoDaddy that are known for domain names, they tend to have really terrible hosting. In fact, you may have heard me recommend Namecheap, and some people hear me recommend Namecheap for domain registration, which, let me say, I love Namecheap, and I have 100 domains with Namecheap, but their hosting is terrible. <laughs> so it's like going to a burger place and ordering tacos. Jack in the Box tacos, not great tacos. And if you think Jack in the Box tacos are good tacos, come to Austin. I will let you experience some good tacos. <laughs> we have great tacos here. And we there's great hosting, just not with the domain host. And Namecheap's hosting is no better than GoDaddy's, which is a really low bar. So I encourage you to host with a good host that specializes in WordPress hosting. Now, there are a lot of good hosts out there, but the one that I recommend for shared hosting, so this is cheap hosting. It's not the fastest, but it's the fastest of the cheap ones that I've found in my tests, and that is Bluehost. They cost around $7 a month. You can often get it cheaper, at least at first, with deals. I'll have an affiliate link in the show notes. And Bluehost is surprisingly fast for how expensive it is. And the other two good ones are SiteGround and DreamHost. Unless you're using one of those three, you're probably going to see a boost in traffic by switching to one of those three without spending any more money. In fact, you may even save a little bit of money moving to one of those three. Now, if you're a novelist, shared hosting with a company like Bluehost is probably all you need. And if you're writing nonfiction and you're not really big into blogging, it's also probably all you need. But if you're writing nonfiction and your blog is a key part of your platform, you're wanting blog posts to go viral, you're getting lots of traffic, to your blog, uh, you're wanting your blog to rank really well in Google, you're probably going to need to spend more money on hosting. <laughs> it's just how it is. The more you spend, the faster your website will be. And there's a tier of hosting above shared hosting that I recommend for authors called managed WordPress hosting. And this is hosting that's specifically tuned to be faster. And the company here that I recommend is WP Engine. Uh, so just think WordPress engine, but it's WP Engine. And I have an affiliate link for them as well. And they're who I use. And WP Engine does a lot of technical things in the background to speed up your website. They also just give you a faster server. I wrote a viral blog post many years ago on my personal website. So at the time, my personal website was getting about 3,000 visitors a month. Not a ton in traffic, but not nothing. But this blog post went viral, and in the next four weeks, I got one million visitors. And I will say, WP Engine was just as fast on the day when, in one day, I had 100,000 visitors as it was on the days when I was getting 1,000 visitors. So while WP Engine's a lot more expensive, it is faster and it is better. WP Engine starts around $23 a month, $25 a month, but I pay $500 a month to host authormedia.com, christianpublishingshow.com, and thomasumstead.com. So most of that's because authormedia.com gets just tons of traffic. We rank for a lot of very popular uh, search phrases, and people are coming in all the time, and it gets expensive. But I will say, if you build a business around your blog, you can make enough money to pay for good hosting. So you can scale it as you go. But most authors only end up spending between 23 to dollars a month and a hundred dollars a month for hosting with WP engine, which is pricey, right? That's more expensive than Bluehost. It's better than Bluehost. But like I said, most start off with Bluehost. And if you need to upgrade, then upgrade. I wouldn't jump straight into WP engine unless you, you know, you can afford it. 
All right, now let's talk about speed bump number four, a slow theme. Your theme affects the speed of your website in a couple of different ways. One, the better your theme is coded, the faster it will run and the faster your whole website will run. But also, uh, the more powerful your theme is, the fewer plugins you need to use. And so if you can use your theme's features instead of using plugins, that's great. Now, if your theme has a bunch of features built in that don't work very well, and you have to then also have plugins, that's the worst, because now you have that functionality duplicated. So the theme that I use for all the websites that I build now is called Divi. And I'll have a link, it's an affiliate link, in the show notes. And Divi used to be kind of slow. It, it was fast enough, but it wasn't great. But in the last six months or so, Divi has pushed out a ton of updates uh, to really improve speed. And the current version of Divi now scores a 100 out of 100 in Google's PageSpeed Insights. So if you run a Google's PageSpeed test on a vanilla Divi theme, it's a perfect score. So Divi is just blazing fast now, which is really great. In fact, if you're using an older version of Divi, one really easy way to speed up your website is to just go into Divi theme settings and click update and get the most recent version and you may see your website instantly go faster. And the other theme that's really famous for being fast is Genesis by Studio Press. Uh, this theme framework is designed more for developers than for end users. I don't recommend it for an author building a website for themselves, but if you pay a webmaster to build you a website, they're either going to use Genesis or Divi if they're any good. <laughs> and if they use Genesis and if they do it correctly, it will be blazing fast. And Genesis used to be faster than Divi. I don't know if it's faster anymore, not because Genesis got slower, but because Genesis, but because Divi got faster. So they're both really good options. What you want to avoid is what I call the dark forest. There's a website called Theme Forest that has thousands of beautiful themes. And these themes are like the sirens of old and they sing a beautiful song. And if you're not careful, you will dash your ship upon the rocks and drown in the waves because <laughs> these themes are not well coded. I've purchased perhaps a dozen themes from Theme Forest and every time I have regretted it. Every time I told myself, this time it will be different. And every time it was a trap. <laughs> so put the wax in your ears. Yes, the themes are beautiful, but they are not well maintained and they're not fast. They also tend to be buggy. It's just not a good way to go. And go with a page builder like Divi or hire a professional who uses Genesis. Avoid the dark forest. I also recommend that you avoid most free themes. Now, the problem with free themes is that there's no financial incentive for the theme creator to keep the theme up to date, to put in security updates, to put in performance updates, and it often becomes an exercise in futility and frustration. The exception to this rule is themes made by Automatic. You'll see them, they'll be called Made by the WordPress Team. These are the default themes that come with WordPress. A new one comes out every year or two, so there's not very many. There's only about a dozen of these themes around and these themes are used as an example of what a good theme should be so yes they're designed for users but they're also just an example of what good code should look like the company behind wordpress their slogan is code is poetry and this shows in their themes it's kind of like their publishing of short stories or publishing of poems to show off the good writing of the code and so an automatic theme is really well coded and really fast and it's going to use all of the latest WordPress features, and it will be free. It probably is not going to look the way you want it to look, but it is a solid option from a performance perspective. So I don't have anything against the official free themes, but the generic free themes, avoid, avoid, avoid. Okay, so those are the speed bumps. Now let's talk about some speed boosts that you can add to your website, some things that you can do to make your website run faster. And we're going to go through this list in order of easy to complex. So you don't have to do all these things. You know, do as much as you can with the skills that you have. And maybe with just what we've already talked about in this first speed boost, you'll be well past to, uh, under the two second mark. The first speed boost is update everything. So as a general rule, updates increase both speed and security of your website. So if you see an update, install it. So for instance, a new version of WordPress just came out, WordPress 5.9, and it's got a bunch of performance improvements built right in. So if you just update to the most recent version of WordPress, 
your website will run a little bit faster. And major WordPress versions comes out about every three months or so, three to four months, and they're almost always improving some aspect of performance here or there. Also update your theme. You know, just like what I talked about with Divi getting faster, also applies to the other themes getting faster. Uh, you have to manually click to update your theme. So it's a reason to log into your website. So consider this your friendly reminder to log into your website and click all the update buttons. Another thing to update is PHP. And this is not obvious. You'll see it in the site health if you did the site health test earlier. It's easy to do. You just send a message to your web host saying, hey, please update me to PHP 8.1. There's also a way in Bluehost for you to do it yourself really easily. And I'll have a link to their guide on how to do it. And it's really easy in WP Engine to do it yourself. Uh, but the new versions of PHP have some significant speed improvements, sometimes as much as 40% faster using the new PHP. And some hosts, they have to move you to a new server to put you on PHP 8.1, which they may do for free. Like you may get a whole server upgrade just by asking for the latest version of PHP. And no host is going to say no to this because there's also important security updates. It makes them look really bad if they don't do it for you, but they often wait for you to ask. So ask or do it yourself, but make sure you're using the latest version of PHP. And then finally, turn on auto plugin updates. This is a relatively new feature in WordPress where your plugins will update themselves automatically. It saves you a lot of hassle. So have as few plugins as possible, but the ones you do have, make sure they update themselves automatically. Now, both Bluehost and WP Engine have ways of updating your plugins. In fact, I built an example website in Bluehost just to teach authors how to do it. And I logged into it doing research for this episode and all the plugins were up to date thanks to Bluehost. They added a feature where they were updating the plugins behind the scenes just to tune the performance. I was really impressed. Now it's time to talk about speed boost number two, use a caching plugin. So in ye olden days, web pages were static HTML files. Uh, the only way to change them was to edit them with special software and then upload them to your server via FTP. These static pages were super fast, but also hard to edit. They were great for users using dial-up modems because <laughs> they had to be fast. And then along came content management systems like WordPress that allowed mere mortals to build their own websites and added really neat interactivity where you can have comments and dynamically updating elements of the website. The downside, though, of content management systems is that since they're dynamic, they create the page from scratch or sort of from scratch every time somebody loads a web page. This puts a lot of strain on the server to custom write a web page just for that person every time. If only there was a way to get the speed of ye olden days with the new power of the modern era. There is, and it's called creating a cached version of your web page. And this, the word cache may sound confusing. It's like the idea of a weapons cache. It's the same idea, uh, but don't worry. It's actually relatively easy to do. There's some plugins that will create cached versions of your web pages automatically. They'll clear out the old ones and replace them with new ones automatically. And it's just a matter of getting them set up and then you leave them alone. There's two caching plugins that I recommend. The first is WP SuperCache, which is a free caching plugin that has all of the basic features that you would expect. Uh, best of all, it's made by Automatic, the company behind WordPress. The code is poetry people. So it's very well coded and will work very well. The downside of WP SuperCache is that it is a little bit technical to set up initially. Once it's set up, it's great. It, you don't have to keep fiddling with it, but getting it set up in the first time is a bit of a hassle. And it also doesn't work on some hosts like WP Engine. So it has some compatibility issues and it's not what I use. What I use is a paid plugin called WP Rocket. And I recently discovered WP Rocket. It was kind of like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> it's amazing. It does dozens of performance improvements behind the scenes on WordPress of which caching is just one of them. And even with WP Engine already doing some caching, WP Rocket dramatically improved our site speed and decreased our surfer utilization. I'm a big fan of WP Rocket. I'm very happy to spend the money. In fact, I think WP Rocket will save you money on hosting. <laughs> so when I said I spent so much on WP Engine, 
we set that up before we switched to WP Rocket. And I suspect we can actually downgrade our host and still get good performance now that we're using WP Rocket. WP Rocket costs, I think, about $50 a year. And I'll have a link to a comparison where you can compare the Supercache and WP Rocket. Um, but if you're on a budget, I think WP Supercache running on Bluehost is perfectly fine. It's a, a solid way to go, and it will really speed things up. All right, now it's time for the final and most technically complex way to speed up an author website. There's a lot more to say about speeding up websites, and this can get insanely expensive and really complicated. So I'm not covering everything. I'm covering everything that an author would need to know for an author website. So you're not competing with big companies, you're competing with other authors. And so the final technical piece is to use a CDN. So what is a CDN? CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. This is a network of servers around the world with copies of your website or copies of the heavy parts of your website. So perhaps just copies of your images or copies of your images and some of the other popular files, the JavaScript files or the CSS files. The, the details don't matter, but what matters is that people are downloading your website from a server near them rather than from a server on the other side of the world. And believe it or not, this really matters because it takes time for bytes to travel around the planet. But they travel at the speed of light. They do. They travel at the speed of light, but there are billions of them. <laughs> so the speed of light times billions of bits equals a big delay. The other thing a CDN does is it helps protect you from the what's known as the Fox News effect or what I'll call the Fox News effect. So somebody on Fox News talks about your book or you. And suddenly, because Fox News is the most popular news network, you have thousands or millions of people typing in your website and loading it all at the same time. If you don't have a CDN, this spike of traffic can cause your website to go down, often at the very worst time, right? Because this is like the time, right? Oprah has just mentioned you, and suddenly everyone's going to your website. And if your website stays up, you get a ton more email subscribers, a ton more book sales, and a ton more excitement. And if your website goes down, all of that is lost. So having a CDN is really helpful if you have the chance of that happening. Typically, if you're going to get mentioned on TV or somewhere else really big, you kind of know that it's coming. It doesn't come out of the blue, but sometimes it does. So having a CDN will help protect you from that. I'll say for most authors, I think a CDN is overkill because most authors never get mentioned by Oprah and they never go on Fox News. But it's not a bad thing to have. And there are some free CDNs, and I'll talk about those right now. So the freest CDN is Jetpack Boost. So Jetpack is another plugin by Automatic, the company behind WordPress. And it does a lot of things. It has a free version and a paid version. I have an affiliate link if you want to get uh, the paid version. Uh, the paid version backs up your website, and makes restoring it uh, really easy. It offers spam protection for your comments and does a bunch of other things, improves search. Uh, but the free version, one of the features in the free version of Jetpack, is the content delivery network. You know, that's why they call it Jetpack Boost, right? It boosts the speed of your website by running it through the WordPress.com servers. So I don't recommend that people use WordPress.com. I recommend that they use WordPress.org running on a server like Bluehost or WP Engine. If you're on Bluehost or WP Engine or, or even GoDaddy, you're using WordPress.org. But you can get some of the features of WordPress.com with Jetpack. So Jetpack's a solid plugin. It is kind of a heavy plugin, so it's great if you're the more of its features that you use, but it does a lot of things. So if you're going to use Jetpack, I encourage you to use Jetpack. So there are a lot of fun features inside of there. The easiest CDN to add to your website, I think, is Rocket CDN. So this is the CDN provided by WP Rocket, the caching plugin. So with just a few clicks, it will take those cached files and those images and offload them onto your CDN. Uh, or onto their CDN being really zippy. So I, mean, I want to say there's seven or eight dollars a month for their CDN. So it's, you do have to pay for it, but it could be well worth the money. I think the best overall CDN is Cloudflare. This is what I use. Cloudflare got famous for protecting websites from DDoS attacks, which is a technical um, kind of attack that authors don't really have to worry about. <laughs> authors are not normally the target of a DDoS attack, but what it means is that suddenly millions of websites or millions of computers are visiting your website, but without the spike. So it's the Fox News effect, but with bots rather than with humans. 
and uh, Cloudflare wants to be positioned to jump in and save you from that for money. So part of the way that they do that is by offering a free product, the free CDN and some free services so that you're already hooked up to their system so that if you do get attacked, it's just a couple of clicks to give them money and now you're protected. Uh, I use Cloudflare for my websites. If you're using Bluehost, it actually routes your DNS through Cloudflare automatically, uh, but I don't think it sets up Cloudflare CDN. The one downside of Cloudflare is that setting it up is kind of complicated. You need to know what DNS is and how it works at least a little bit. You can find some guides online. So if you Google, you know, how to set up Bluehost and Cloudflare or how to set up WP Engine and Cloudflare, you'll find some guides that will walk you through it. But it is more complicated. Jetpack and Rocket CDN are much easier to set up. And you can do it more or less all inside of WordPress. Whereas with Cloudflare, you're going to need to go into your domain name settings and, and do some other kind of technical bits. Um, but if you're willing to do that, their core CDN is free. <laughs> so I do encourage you to use it. But one final warning with Cloudflare. Uh, some of you didn't get episodes for the last couple of months. And the reason is actually Cloudflare. So Cloudflare has a feature called bot fight mode, where it automatically blocks bots coming to the website. And it detected the bots coming from your podcast apps. If you were using CastBox, for instance, or iHeartRadio, and a few others were being detected as evil bots and were being blocked, which meant that people using those apps weren't able to get new episodes. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out what the problem was. And that's the kind of technical hassle that you deal with if you're using Cloudflare. So I don't recommend Cloudflare for most authors, even though it is the best from a performance perspective. It's not the easiest. So for most authors, I would probably just use the free Jetpack Boost. It's free. It's relatively easy to set up, and it will do a lot to improve the performance of your website. And you may be surprised once you start ranking well how much more traffic you get from Google to your blog posts how much more traffic you get from Google to your book pages and how many more email subscribers you get. You may not realize it, but this may be the one thing holding you back. Our sponsor today is my course, How to Build an Amazing Author Website. This course, I walk you through building an author website yourself. In fact, that's where the example author website came from. <laughs> so I build a website in Bluehost. I walk you through what you need to pay for, what you don't need to pay for. I guide you, really, because there's a lot of things Bluehost will sell you that you don't need. And so I walk you through. You don't need this. You don't need this, etc. And then I go through the whole process of building the website, installing Divi, and more. And then in the second half of the website, it's all about how to make your website better for readers, how to get more traffic. And that second part of the website is valuable for everyone, even if you're still using Wix or, God forbid, Weebly. It will still help you make your Weebly website better. But I would like to tell you that there is a better way, and it is WordPress. And the best part of this course is that it is 100% free. It's affiliate supported, so I have affiliate links to Divi and some of the other things that I recommend. You can use those links or not, but the course is my gift to you as a thank you for being a listener of the Novel Marketing Podcast. Speaking of listeners, our featured patrons of January, we only got two new patrons in January, Elk Lake Publishing and Henry S. Bowles. So I just want to say thank you so much for becoming patrons. Uh, January was rough. It was a, a net loss of patrons. So I'm going to throw out a sad puppy here. <laughs> so I guess I made some of you mad. I'm not sure what it was that I said. But uh, anyway, if you want to keep the podcast on the air, please consider becoming an Alva Marketing patron today. And if you've been meaning to sign up and been putting it off, now would be a great time. <laughs> and if you can't afford to become a patron, but you still want to support the show, a really easy way to do that is to use one of the affiliate links in this post. So if you go to the blog post version of this episode, pretty much every company and service I mentioned, if I have or could find an affiliate link, I put it in there. It doesn't cost you any extra and it will send a little bit of money back to support the show. And a personal update, we now have three children and my two toddlers, or the oldest one's really more of a preschooler now, Anytime we go on a date or I leave the house, they suddenly want lots of hugs. <laughs> and uh, in fact, it's to the point that if I want to arrive somewhere on time, I really need to budget time in my commute for the goodbye hugs. <laughs> and I started thinking about it and it's like, my children can get a hug from me anytime they want, but they most want a hug when hugs are about to get scarce. It's the same is true with bedtime, right? They know they're about to go to bed. 
So they suddenly want lots of hugs. Yes, they're delaying uh, bedtime, but they also realize that they're not going to be able to get hugs for you know, eight hours or 10 hours while they're sleeping. And as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, readers and toddlers are a lot alike in this way, right? Readers won't do anything today if they can put it off to tomorrow. But if there's some scarcity, suddenly they want to do it right now. So if you want readers to buy your book now rather than later, think of ways to add scarcity to your book and to reading your book. There's a lot of ways to do this, right? One way is to have a live event that they need to read your book before they can enjoy. Or perhaps you have a limited edition that they, if they don't buy now, they'll never be able to buy again. Or perhaps announce a future price increase so that there's some urgency and or the current low price is becoming scarce. Now, there's a lot of ways to add scarcity to make buying your book like getting a hug before bedtime. And if you want some more ideas, I have a whole episode titled How to Use Scarcity and Ubiquity to Make Your Book Irresistible. And you'll find a link to that episode at authormedia.com slash 313 for episode 313. In fact, that's where you'll find links to everything I talked about today. The Novel Marketing Podcast is a production of Author Media. This episode's audio was edited by William Umstadt. The blog post is by Shauna Lettler. The producers, Lori Christine, and I am Thomas Umstead Jr., your host. To find the blog uh, version of this episode, visit authormedia.com slash 313. Thank you for listening, and live long and prosper.